InBone 2 Total Angle Arthroplasty is a modular, customizable implant with the first and only precise intramedullary guidance system. To begin, place the anterior incision approximately 125 millimeters long and directly lateral of the tibialis anterior. Expose the tibia, talus, and a portion of the midfoot while avoiding the anterior tendons and neurovascular bundle. The preferred interval is between the tibialis anterior and the extensor hallucis tendon. To obtain the mortise view, rotate the ankle approximately 10 degrees internally. Align the guide rods under fluoro. Center the AP rods on the talus using the ML plate. Then rotate the U-bracket until the AP rods are in the center of the tibia, verifying each movement with fluoro. Rotate the C-arm to the lateral view and adjust the guide rods under fluoro. Move the AP plate to align the ML rods on the center of the talus. Then move the foot plate, which controls plantar or dorsiflexion, to align the rods in the center of the tibia, verifying each movement with fluoro. Rotate the C-arm to AP view and confirm rod alignment. Make a vertical incision in the bottom of the heel approximately 15 millimeters long. Attach the primary bushing assembly and cannula to the foot holder and insert the 6 millimeter drill bit into the back of the cannula. Begin to slowly peck drill into the calcaneus. This should take at least three minutes if properly done. As you peck drill, periodically confirm under fluoro that the drill advancement is in line with the AP guide rods. Continue peck drilling past the cortical bone of the tibia and advance into the intramedullary canal approximately six to nine centimeters. Leave the drill in place. Install the anterior fixture assembly onto the foot holder with the appropriate sized saw guide, positioning the saw guide as close to the ankle as possible. Align the saw guide to the drill. Insert a saw blade into the distal slot and examine the lateral view. Position the saw blade to cut the proper amount of talus. Return to AP view. Use two 2.4 mm Steinman pins to secure the saw guide to the tibia through the top two holes. Then, secure the talus using the bottom two holes on the sides of the 6 mm drill. Insert the lateral pin between the talus and fibula and the medial pin between the talus and medial malleolus. A total of six Steinman pins will be used. Pull the drill back so it is out of the way of the saw cuts, but do not remove it from the foot. Place the anti-rotation notch insert into the saw guide. Select the proper size drill and drill through both cortices. Remove the drill and insert. Saw the tibia, talus, and the medial and lateral gutters, being careful not to cut past the posterior cortical bone. At the top of the tibial cut, use the oscillating saw or an osteotome to cut down toward the talus at 60 degrees. Remove the anterior section of the tibia so the tailor section can be removed in one piece by grabbing the Steinman pins. Remove the Steinman pins and the rest of the tibial section. Remove loose bone pieces and irrigate the joint space. Remove the six millimeter drill and replace it with the drive rod. In the visible joint space, connect the reamer tip to the drive rod using the appropriate size clip and reamer tip. Ream to the desired depth based on the number of stem pieces previously templated. While turning clockwise, retract the reamer into the visible joint space. Install the tibial stem wrench on the flats of the reamer tip and unscrew it from the driver. Remove the drive rod and replace it with the strike rod. Select the appropriate sized tibial tray AP sizer and insert into the resected joint space. Use both ends of the sizing tool to determine the optimum AP size for the tibial tray, standard or long. The strike rod can be used to fully seat the tibial tray sizer into the tibial resection. Remove the strike rod and replace it with the X drive. Select the correct top tibial stem and corresponding wrench with the wrench oriented in the distal direction. Slide the stem pieces into the wrench with a finger or thumb to hold them in place. Introduce the stem piece into the joint space and place the nose into the intramedullary canal of the tibia. An assistant should hold the wrench while the surgeon installs the next stem piece. Insert a mid-stem piece onto the clip and align the mid-stem with the top stem piece. While an assistant holds the wrench, engage the X-Drive. Thread the stems and firmly torque them together. 
Remove the clip from the mid-stem piece and replace it with the wrench from the top stem piece before pushing the stem up into the tibia. Repeat for additional mid-stem components. Select the appropriate base stem and introduce it with a clip. Thread the base stem to the mid stem using the X drive. Remove the clip and replace it with the wrench on the base stem. Rotate the base stem clockwise so the Morse taper release hole is pointing anteriorly and is in line with the anti-rotation drill hole. Remove the X drive and replace it with the strike rod. Holding the tibial stem base with the wrench, introduce the tibial tray using a holding tool. Insert the Morse taper on the tibial tray into the stem base. Remove the holding tool before striking the strike rod. Push the strike rod into the indentation on the bottom surface of the tibial tray. Holding the stem base firmly, strike the end of the strike rod with a mallet to seat the Morse taper. Apply bone cement to the top and side walls of the tibial tray component and push the assembly firmly into the tibia using the strike rod. Install the appropriate poly insert trial and Taylor dome trial into the joint space using the corresponding holding tools. Release the foot from the foot holder and with trial implants in place, take the ankle through a passive range of motion. Once the Taylor dome trial has settled into optimum anatomical position, install two 1.4 millimeter pins through the Taylor dome trial to hold it in place. Remove the poly insert trial and install a 2.4 millimeter pin through the center of the Taylor dome trial to the depth of the selected Taylor stem, using the lateral view to verify depth. Using the 4 millimeter drill, drill through the Taylor dome trial to prepare the talus for the anterior pegs of the Taylor dome. Remove the 1.4 millimeter pins and Taylor dome trial. Install the appropriate length Taylor stem reamer over the 2.4 millimeter pin and ream to the depth of the selected distal stem. Remove the reamer and the Steinman pin. Insert the Taylor stem and Taylor dome assembly into the Taylor stem seating block. Align the strike tool on the Taylor dome and set the Morse taper with a small mallet. Place the foot in planter flexion and insert the blue tibial tray insert to protect the Taylor dome surface. Using the holding tool, insert the Taylor dome. Apply bone cement to the bottom surface of the Taylor dome and use the dome strike until the dome is flush with the Taylor surface. Thread the appropriate attachment screw into the tibial tray. Assemble the poly insertion tool and place on the tibial tray. Secure with the attachment nut. Use the jack screw to advance the poly insert implant into the tibial tray. It is important to apply reaction force as needed to keep the insertion tool at a 90 degree angle to the tibia. Advance the jack screw as far as possible. Remove the poly insertion tool. Then, using the poly impact tool, tap the insert to ensure it is fully seated. Lastly, verify final placement with both AP and lateral floral views and close the anterior incision. The InBone 2 Total Ankle System is a major advancement in total ankle arthroplasty, offering precise and reproducible installation. InBone 2 Total Ankle, the most advanced engineering and technology for total ankle replacement.